Nestled in the booming city of North Adams, surrounded by the Berkshire Mountains, home to some of the nation's most beautiful landscapes, Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts has been elevating lives and educating students for 125 years with a holistic goal, that they thrive as whole people, personally, academically, and professionally. Since our inception as the Normal School in North Adams in 1894, MCLA has provided educational access and exceptional learning opportunities to generations of students and alumni. Over the years, MCLA has evolved to meet the needs of changing times. In 1932, the Normal School became the State Teachers College of North Adams, reflecting the increased importance of education as an academic discipline. In 1960, we changed our name to North Adams State College and expanded our focus to include professional degrees in business administration and computer science. In 1997, we assumed a unique mission within the state university system as Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts, the Commonwealth's Public Liberal Arts College. In 125 years, we've grown from a normal school with 53 graduates to a top public college with more than 19,000 alumni. In 2019, MCLA was recognized by U.S. News and World Report's Social Mobility Ranking, which measures an institution's success in enrolling and graduating students from low-income backgrounds. In the next 125 years, MCLA is committed to making a difference in the lives of students while working to keep tuition affordable and expanding educational opportunities. Our next steps aren't possible without a strong community of supporters who believe in our mission. Here for all and committed to each, we're proud of our legacy and our history of empowering students to make their own impression on the world. Hello, my name is Mohan Boudram, and I'm chair of the Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts Board of Trustees. I'm glad you're able to join us today for the celebration of the college's anniversary. Though it's been a year unlike anything any of us could ever have predicted, I'm so very glad we're able to gather virtually from all around the world to celebrate the exceptional history of the Commonwealth's only public liberal arts college. So I invite you now to join me in a toast to MCLA's 125th anniversary. Here's to a tradition of excellence in learning and teaching, innovative scholarship, and intellectual creativity. And here's to the next 125 years of our very fine institution. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to MCLA. Cheers to you, MCLA, and happy birthday on your 125th. Cheers, Cheers to MCLA. To MCLA. Cheers, Cheers to MCLA. Cheers, MCLA. Cheers to 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 MCLA! 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 Pitch, Tom. Come on. Thank you for joining us as we proudly celebrate MCLA's quasquicentennial, 125 years of elevating the lives of our students, putting their educational experiences first. While many things have changed over the years, our commitment to an affordable, quality, public liberal arts education and our mission of access and excellence in education has not. The college continues to be an important leader in the revitalization of the region 
through our efforts to provide undergraduate, adult, and graduate education, to recruit and educate students from underrepresented populations, and to grow the Berkshire economy through our economic impact of more than $15 million a year. MCLA remains a high-quality public liberal arts institution consistently recognized by U.S. News & World Report as a top 10 public liberal arts college in the nation. Recently, U.S. News & World Report also ranked MCLA 45th in the nation among colleges and universities, public and private, on a social mobility index. The social mobility index measures how well students do as a, resu as a result of their education specifically students who come from lower income families. In 2020, only seven public institutions across the nation had a higher social mobility score than MCLA. Additionally, the University of Southern California Center on Race and Equity awarded MCLA the highest score in the nation for educating black students well. And the EOS Foundation has repeatedly recognized MCLA as one of only 18 public or private institutions in the Commonwealth to have achieved gender equity. MCLA is the only public four-year institution on that list. These are challenging times in public higher education. And while our various rankings will advance and retreat on any given year, what is consistent is mine and my colleagues' commitment to providing a high quality public liberal arts education that prepares our students to live elevated lives. To see evidence of that commitment, one need look no further than a recent announcement I made acknowledging that the US Department of Education has awarded MCLA a TRIO program grant for student support services. The college will receive up to $1.3 million over five years to enhance student support for under-resourced students. The TRIO program will work toward increasing the retention, good academic standing, and graduation rates of eligible students and enhance our institutional commitment to support low-income students, first-generation college students, and students with disabilities. MCLA's program will serve up to 160 students a year. I'm also pleased to announce the opening of our new fitness center in the Amsler Campus Center. To have this center open now at a time when student, students need a healthy outlet to relieve stress is fortuitous. I am grateful to our friends at MCLA Dining and the Massachusetts State College Building Authority for their support and resources to transform this space into a fitness center and a much improved athletic training space. This renovation also allows us to bring all of our athletic coaches together under one roof, literally. The college has been fortunate to receive strong support from community partners throughout our 125 years. We want to acknowledge how grateful we are to them and to you for allowing MCLA to continue enriching the lives of our students. Together, we have been able to positively impact thousands of lives to benefit our region and the Commonwealth at large, and we look forward to building on that legacy. Let me take a moment to thank our sponsors of this event. I am grateful for their support, for their partnership, and for their friendship. Our headlining sponsor is Adams Community Bank. Charlie O'Brien, the president, is a longtime friend and supporter of MCLA, and we are grateful that he agreed to sign on so early as the headlining sponsor. So thank you, Charlie, and your team for your support and your friendship with MCLA. Our quasquicentennial sponsors are Greylock Federal Credit Union, Berkshire Bank, and Mountain One Bank. I'm grateful to John Bissell, Lori Kiley, and Bob Frazier for their longstanding support of MCLA as well. Our MCLA sponsors are Jim Clemmer from the class of 1986. Jim is a former trustee as well as the interim president that just preceded me at MCLA. And Janine Driver, the class of 1992, who's the principal in Lion Tamer Education and the Body Language Institute. Our North Adams State teacher sponsor, Rome, Christina Park Gallery, has, has been a great support for us, a new friend to the institution. Christina stepped forward very early to say that she wanted to support our programs. And so we're grateful, Christina, for you and for the artwork from Africa that you bring to the Northern Berkshires. Our blue and gold sponsors are our longtime friend and colleague, Ellen Kennedy from the class of 1983 and Mark Gold. Julie Arnold from the class of 1992 and the foundation, chair, foundation board chair. Billy Joe Sawyer, and Crane Stationery. The Trailblazer supports 
supporters include Liberty Mutual, as well as myself and my wife, Lisa. Our 125th table sponsors include the class of 1966, my colleagues Gina Puck from the class of 2007 and Robert Ziomek from the class of 1989, Mike Avis from the class of 1991, our friends to the West at Williams College, Nash Insights, Berkshire Community College, an important partner for us, one Berkshire, Jason Doheny from the class of 2004, and Tim Cherubini. We're also grateful for the support of General Dynamics, Narrative Research Group, Brzee and Huben, and Pet Petrie Contracting. Thank you all for that, that support. I'm also grateful for EDM Services, who are our Wish You Were Here sponsor. We're grateful for the good work that they've done with us over the years. And of course, Ducharme Resolutions, who've been great supporters for a very long time. I'm so grateful for all of our sponsors' support, and I'm glad that all of you watching tonight can see the deep and broad support our Berkshire community has for MCLA. Now, we have some wonderful friends who will share more information with you about MCLA. Good morning, uh, my name is Charlie O'Brien. I'm CEO at Adams Community Bank. I've been at the bank about 23 years, and it's uh, been an honor to, uh, to be here and uh, being invested in the community, helping out our students in a whole variety of ways and uh, helping our community. So um, I'll uh, turn it over to our featured student this morning, Emma. My name is Emma Snyder. I'm from Shaftesbury, Vermont. I'm a sophomore here at MCLA and my graduating year is 2023. And I'm happy to be here, so thank you. Uh, thank you, Emma. Um, so I was asked to say a few words about why we chose to support MCLA. I thought back, again, I've been here 23 years, and I've seen MCLA evolve as a school and invest in their students, invest in their, in their campus, their, their buildings, invest in their faculty, and uh, they've really uh, done so much for our local area. And it's just, in many ways, their experience as a, uh, a trusted uh, member of our community is also uh, reflective of what we've done. It's really a pleasure to work with, uh, with those at MCLA and President Burge and his team have uh, really done so, so much good work. And uh, certainly the, the students have benefited, uh, students like Emma. As we get into our questions, um, Emma, um, can you tell me a little bit uh, more about yourself and how did you decide to attend MCLA? I've always wanted to go to a school that had a tight-knit community. And when I visited North Adams for the first time, I really realized how close and interactive everybody here in North Adams is. MCLA encourages me to explore all my possibilities here on campus. And I always am reminded that I have help along the way between the different programs that they offer or the services that they offer on campus. I always feel like I'm my best self here. Wonderful. <laughs> Uh, the year 2020 is certainly one for the record books. Uh, yes. COVID-19, COVID all of the challenges associated with that, what it meant for your, uh, all the students on campus. Uh, clearly, you had to uh, adjust and embrace change this year. And uh, part of that could have been uh, how you were paying for your schooling. And uh, I know that our bank was involved in uh, creating some emergency funding. Uh, could you uh, tell me a little bit about how that benefited you during this challenging year? So the resiliency fund really took a weight off my shoulders because at the time everything was changing so quickly and unexpectedly. It just gave my family a sense of support, which I really appreciate. How did that uh, award actually help you achieve your uh, academic goals? I was able to save up enough money due to the resiliency fund to actually live here on campus this semester, which was really important to me. Um, I find it helpful and it allows me to gauge on campus more easily than if I was to stay at home. And it's helped me adjust to the challenges of switching online and in-class hybrids. That's been a challenge, but I feel supported here. That's awesome to hear. Um, and uh, again, uh, what a year you, you need to stay adaptive and positive. Uh, what makes you feel hopeful right now as an MCLA student? So one thing that makes me hopeful is my ambition to be the first businesswoman within my family. And I'm happy and uh, proud to say that MCLA professors are really dedicated to getting through the school year and helping me graduate no matter what trivials come our way, like coronavirus and 2020. 
with an attitude like that, I know that you're going to do really well. And congratulations on uh, being back in school this year, uh, having such a great and positive attitude. And look forward to uh, following your, your positive outcomes during the year and uh, for the next couple of years uh, until you graduate. So congratulations to you, Emma. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Christina Parks and I am an MCLA Foundation Corporator and I have two businesses in North Adams, Rome Gallery and Christina Studios, which is a production and film editing company that is located on the campus of Mass Mocha. I am happy to say that more than half of my staff are MCLA graduates, so together we are proud to be one of the sponsors of tonight's event. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an African wildlife photographer and filmmaker and a conservationist, and my work focuses on protecting and rehabilitating habitats, saving critically endangered species through research and on the ground work, and by helping support education and fair trade practices that benefit African communities and wildlife organizations as well. But once upon a time, you might not know also that I was a singer and a member of the UMass Chorale and the Chamber Singers, and I sang in the Massachusetts All-State Chorus and other chorales throughout the country. So for me, it is with extremely great pleasure that I have the honor of introducing you to your own MCLA Allegrettos. They were founded in 2009 by the students themselves and the Allegrettos who were formerly known as the Hoosings, are building themselves quite a reputation by amassing numerous accolades and awards in a very short amount of time. These vocal masters are going to slay you with their a cappella and gospel-inspired pipes. So without further ado, belt it out, guys, and I wish I was there in person. Looking forward to seeing everyone, and have a great night. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Hannah Susi. I'm the current co-president of the MCLA Allegrettos and director of the gospel section of the Allegrettos. Hi, my name is Chantal Minter. I'm the other co-president of the Allegrettos, and I am the director for the acapella section. We are very glad to have spoken here at the 125th anniversary. We can't believe MCLA has been here for that long, but we are just super excited to be here as our 125th celebration. While we're here, we do want to give a couple of shout outs to other members of our eboard. We have Mary Hope Caulfield as our vice president, Tiffany Ferrer as our treasurer, Sam Lee as our secretary, and Jamie Fukula as our PR chair. We'd also like to give a shout out uh, to our graduated seniors of 2020, Dan Burke, Danny Laureano, TJ Jones, TJ Fontaine, Sam Hines, and Corey Woodley and Jay. We'd also like to say thank you to our faculty advisor, Kathleen Carbone, without whom none of this would be possible. As a club on campus, uh, we often hold performances for others from our concerts at the end of each semester to partnering with the dance company for their shows or clubs like Christian Fellowship or Nexus. We've also been involved with a lot of fundraisers and performances at local venues. Uh, it could be ranging from doing Festival of Trees in Pittsfield or singing at local churches here in downtown North Adams. And we've also been helping raise awareness for the AYJ Fund here at Church Street Center. Uh, our club has grown so much over the past 11 years, starting as just a very small club and only gaining more members from there and as well as more talent. We are incredibly proud and incredibly glad to be a part of this group to work with them as leaders and directors. Thank you again for inviting us to speak here at the 125th anniversary celebrations. We are honored to present for your enjoyment two songs, uh, a medley of Abide With Me and It Is Well With My Soul as performed by the gospel section of the Allegrettos. And the song Me by Taylor Swift featuring Brendan Urie as performed by the acapella section. Thank you and enjoy.
One of these things is not like the others, like a rainbow with all of the colors. Baby doll, when it comes to a lover, promise that you'll never find another like me. Bob Zio, my class of 1989 and the president of the MCLA Foundation. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining us tonight from your homes and offices. As you have heard from many of our speakers so far, over the years, MCLA has redefined itself time and time again. Name changes, campus buildings, student support services, and increased programming, just to name a few. One thing is constant, our commitment to our students. I hope you will consider making a commitment to our students by making a contribution to support the MCLA 125th Elevating Lives Fund. Your gift will have immediate impact on MCLA students in many ways, helping them feel secure about the future by adding to the scholarships they receive and reduce the debt that they may incur. Help them secure a career launching internship, which will lead them to a job upon graduation and in our current time, help them cover emergency needs, things from rent to just putting food on their table. Our goal has been and will always be to provide equitable access to a college education and elevate the lives of each and every one of our students. In honor of the college's 125th, whether you are a NASC or MCLA grad, parent, friend, or sponsor, please contribute tonight by clicking the donate button below or by using the text to give link on your screen. All of us here at MCLA, thank you for elevating students' lives. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having me. I'm Lori gazello Kiley. I am the director of the Berkshire Bank Foundation. I'm also an alum of MCLA as I graduated with my master's degree in 1999. And I'm here with Jay Bailey, who works at Berkshire Bank and also graduated from MCLA and may have been North Adams State College at the time. Jay, thanks for being here with us. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks. Um, so Berkshire Bank Foundation is a strong supporter of MCLA um, as we have some key focus areas um, that we have as priorities. 
Um, and one of them is to serve under, um, to support underserved populations to become college, career, and job ready, and to contribute to the economic vitality of their communities. MCLA goes a long way toward supporting this mission by providing a top-notch educational experience to students, many of whom are lower income and first generation. Um, specifically here at Berkshire Bank, we support their STEM Academy, which is dedicated to improving access, affordability, and transition to college for this very population. Um, we're also happy to talk to Jay and, uh, about his experience and about how his undergraduate experience may have impacted uh, your current career, Jay. So let me just ask you a few questions. Um, the first is, tell me a little bit about yourself and why you decided to attend MCLA. Okay, thank you, Lori. Uh, I'm Henry J. Bailey Sr., and I'm also known to most people as J. Bailey. Um, I am a, a vice president and a senior business banking officer at Berkshire Bank, where I've worked for 22 years. I, when I went to uh, college there, it was first known as uh, North Adams State College, and then became uh, Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts the year that I graduated, which was 1996. I was fortunate in that the year that I graduated, I received two diplomas, one from North Adams State College and one from Mass College of Liberal Arts. So great. So you are, you are an actual alum of MCLA as well. That's wonderful. So yes. I'm sure that that degree really served you well in your current career here. It, it has. Uh, you know, I uh, had actually gone to uh, MCLA right out of uh, going to night school at Berkshire Community College, mm -hmm. uh, where I received an associate's degree. At the time, I was uh, bringing up a uh, family and, and working full time, so I was fortunate that uh, uh, Mass College uh, offered uh, evening courses uh, for non-traditional students. What did you enjoy most about being a student at MCLA? I know you had a, a little bit of a different experience than a, a, um, an undergraduate, a traditional age undergraduate might have. All of the uh, professors that I had at uh, Mass College were top notch. But I, I really, uh, you know, got the experience of being able to work with a diverse group of people, um, which has helped me immensely throughout my career. Any final words as we celebrate um, the, the celebration of 125 years of MCLA? Congratulations uh, for 125 years. Uh, hope that uh, celebrate another 125 and. Uh, Great college in the community, um, have a you know, great deal of respect for the college and all it's done in the community over the years. Established in 2007, the President's Medallion honors the champions of Berkshire County and Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts. Prior re recipients include Martha Oak Coakley and former MCLA Vice President of Academic Affairs, Steve Green, for his 36 years of service to the college. Each honoree has demonstrated the utmost dedication and appreciation for the institution and has fostered innovation at MCLA and the Berkshire County region. For this, our 125th anniversary celebration, we are privileged to recognize three very special individuals who have made significant contributions of service and leadership to MCLA, to Berkshire County, and to the Commonwealth. Joining me for the first of these three awards is Tyler Fairbank. The Fairbank Group is driven to build things to last, not only the businesses, but the relationships and partnerships that stand behind them. Since 2008, they have been expanding their electric, eclectic portfolio of businesses. This portfolio includes three resorts, Jiminy Peak Mountain Resort, Cranmore Mountain Resort, and Bromley Mountain Ski Resort, and real estate development at all three resorts. Additionally, they have a renewable energy development company, EOS Ventures, and two technology companies, Snowgun Technology and Bull Wheel Productions. Whether it is providing families a place to connect by experiencing their mountain resorts, teaching kids self-confidence through learning to ski and ride, building a more sustainable future through renewable energy development, creating career opportunities for employees, or contributing to the communities in which they operate and serve, 
The purpose of the Fairbank Group entities goes far beyond that of a profit motive. Their mission is to be the best in any industry they are involved in and enhance the lives of the people they touch while doing so. The Fairbank Group is headed by the father and son team of Brian and Tyler Fairbank, with Brian serving as chairman and Tyler serving as chief executive officer. They partner with noted Boston entrepreneur and philanthropist Joe O'Donnell in all of their endeavors. In 1969, Brian Fairbank was a ski school director in Wisconsin when he accepted an opportunity with Jiminy Peak Mountain Resort that would advance his career and begin the pursuit of what would become his life's passion. In his management role at Jiminy, Brian created a year-round resort that reflected his early vision. Brian eventually took ownership and became president of Jiminy Peak. Brian served on the board of Berkshire Health Systems for two decades and was the town moderator for Hancock for 35 years. In 2006, Brian established a donor-advised fund with Berkshire Taconic Community Foundation, allowing his family to direct gifts to the charities and causes that they supported. After completing college, Tyler Fairbank worked in the family business for a few years before leaving to pursue other interests. Tyler was instrumental in the startup of the Berkshire Economic Development Corporation and served as a trustee and chair of the board for Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts. In 2008, Brian and Tyler once again joined forces and created EOS Ventures, a renewable energy company. With the installation of the, con the country's first privately owned wind turbine, Jiminy Peak is one of the greenest resorts in the nation. In 2011, Brian and Tyler became co-CEOs of the Fairbank Group. Then in 2013, Brian stepped back to become chairman focusing on the long-term strategies of the company, and Tyler became the CEO. Tyler Fairbank, in honor of the Fairbank Group's exemplary service to MCLA and the community, I am proud to confer upon you the MCLA Presidential Medallion. I cannot begin to tell you what an honor it is to be receiving the acknowledgement from the greater MCLA family. As some of you know, I was a trustee for a decade and it was the joy of a lifetime. There was no fonder time in my life as we marched down the field to be one of the finest public liberal arts institutions in the country. My father, Brian, and I are truly thrilled to be given this honor. We've been committed to MCLA for many decades and will continue to be for decades to come. MCLA is a pillar in the Berkshires community, a community where we are deeply committed. Cheers to you all and thank you so much for this honor. It is a tremendous honor to be recognized with the President's Medallion Award. I thank you. I've been at the helm of Jiminy Peak since 1969. 51 years of my life dedicated to try and make Jiminy all it's capable of becoming. It took a lot of perseverance, a lot of never, never give up attitude, but more importantly is it took a, a team of people working together to maximize Jiminy's full potential. I'm proud and so is our team, proud of what we've accomplished. MCLA has been a part of the fabric throughout that period of time. If it's been students working for us part-time in the winter months or school year, or full-time during the summer at Mountain Adventure Park. And for sure, faculty, staff, and employees have all been part of Jiminy in terms of skiing up and down the mountain many times over the years. MCLA helps to make up the very fabric of Berkshire County. You provide opportunity for students to gain new skills for a career after college. You provide employment, which adds to the economic vitality of the region. It's a great partnership between the college and the community working hand in hand to enhance so many lives. Tyler and I truly believe that our journey through life can enhance the lives of those we touch, whether it's working on uh, boards of directors or serving as volunteers to try and enhance those less fortunate. Tyler and I truly hope that our journey through life can also enhance the lives of those we touch, whether it's serving on boards of directors or helping those that are less fortunate, it's to be a good citizen 
to do the decent thing that is most important and foremost in our minds. To that end, we've established a scholarship for Berkshire County residents to, to attend the college. It's been rewarding for us to make that possible and it's our intention to have that live well on into the future. Thank you again for the award. Hello friends. Earlier this year, I got a call from President Burge inviting me to serve as MC for MCLA's 125th anniversary celebration. Of course, I immediately said yes and set about thinking about what I wanted to bring to the role. I planned out costume changes, a memorial tribute that would have been equal parts uplifting and heartfelt, a musical number tracing the rich history of MCLA and its critical role in the city of North Adams. But of course, 2020 had different plans for all of us. And so we're having this celebration in a different way. But I think that speaks to the history and the quality and the role of MCLA. Resilience, adaptability, responsiveness to change, innovation, all the things that we hope and expect that this great college will instill in its graduates and that they will bring into the world. So while we're celebrating in a different way, the purpose of that celebration remains just as strong as it would have if we were gathered in person. So with that, and I promise you, this is Ginger Ale. I raise a glass to MCLA, a great liberal arts college, a great partner for the city of North Adams, and an institution with a rich history and many great years ahead of it. Thank you. I am Jamie Ellen Menchecki. I am the Chief Administrative Officer at Greylock Federal Credit Union, and I'm so glad to be part of this right now. I'm Evie Rodriguez. I am the, um, I'm actually a financial coordinator at the Office of Campus Life at Williams, and I am in my senior year at MCLA. Fantastic. Congratulations. You're almost at the end. Yes. I'm excited. <laughs> So first, I'd like to congratulate MCLA and all the past and present Board of Trustees, staff, alumni, current students, and community supporters that have been involved in the last 125 years of academic excellence and intellectual curiosity. Greylock's history with MCLA goes back years. And why is that? It's their core values aligned with Greylock's. It's being inclusive, empowering lifelong learning, providing access to all, and giving individual students the confidence and opportunities to move forward. We are so proud of all the students who participate in the past, and we're very excited for all those yet to come. So Ivy, I'd love to hear a little bit more about yourself and how you decided to attend MCLA. So I actually began my um college career straight out of high school. At that time, I was very interested in being a nurse. I didn't have kids at that point. <laughs> I ended up getting pregnant and had um, my first child uh, right after being accepted into the nursing program on my first try. And she had um, complications. She actually didn't speak until the age of four. And we found out that she um, is autistic. Being a mom at that point, I was a single mom. Um, it was just difficult trying to make those ends meet and be able to go back to school. Making the decision to go back, I had, you know, my daughter in the forefront of my mind because she kept saying, you know, I don't want to be the reason why you didn't finish. And it's like for someone to have been nonverbal until the age of yeah. four, she didn't sit literally, she didn't say anything. And so I let her know, too, that I had the scholarship. She's like, see, like, you know, she's even saying, see, mom, they believe in you. I believe in you. So it's just I, I have support. I have motivation. I have my own self-determination because I know I can do it. 
Well, that's an incredible uh, journey, and I commend you for, for doing that and being such a role model for so many, as well as your, your family and, you know, others that are, could be in the same situation. So thank you. You're almost there. <laughs> How does it feel to have your education supported by a scholarship support? It's absolutely amazing. It's empowering. It takes so much off of my shoulders knowing that um, I don't have to come up with the funding or at least all of it. I feel more um, flexible in the sense of I don't have to worry about my children if they're going to not have as much to eat or, or rent being paid because I was given that extra support. What's your next steps after graduation? I'm actually planning to go straight into the MBA program. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, you can tell that um, CLA has really set you up to uh, move forward. And um, you can see this in this interview. You are one amazing woman. And um, I love Sky's the Limit. And, and you're off. And again, an excellent role model for the community, to those you know stepping back into education at a later life. And within your own family. So thank you. I can say thank you a million times and it would never cover what I really feel. Um, to have just that backing is, is tremendous. Joining me to accept the award for Bridge is Gwendolyn Van Zandt. Founded in 2007, Bridge is a grassroots organization dedicated to catalyzing change and integration through promoting mutual understanding and respect among diverse groups and serving as a resource to both institutions and the community at large. Bridge serves as a catalyst for change and integration through collaboration, education, training, dialogue, fellowship, and advocacy. Bridge is a designated organization by the Commonwealth as a vendor in the Supplier Diversity Program in the spirit of the Affirmative Market, market Campaign. Bridge facilitates cultural competence programming in schools and institutions to promote equity and to educate on systemic racism and cultural barriers. Services include cultural literacy and cultural competency training, consulting, facilitation, youth leadership, multicultural education, parent engagement in education, civil rights and social justice forums, and advocacy with diverse groups. Through a 360 degree perspective on community and civic participation, Bridge has designed a holistic approach to community and public health. Bridge's goal is to impact hearts, minds, and behaviors that result in a positive cultural shift and systemic changes in policy, law, and practice toward a more just, safe, and equitable society. In 2019, Bridge was recognized as a national finalist by Everyday Democracy for the Paul J. Eicher Award. Bridge was recognized as well in 2015 as a Berkshire Trend Center for Nonprofit Impact and as a statewide finalist for Massachusetts Nonprofit Network for Small Nonprofits in 2016. The energy, passion, and leadership behind Bridge is Gwendolyn Van Zandt, an experienced organizational change consultant and coach who works at the intersection of diversity leadership, equity and inclusion, and strategic planning. She is the CEO and founding director of Bridge and the equity and inclusion team lead at Changemaker Strategies. A skilled community organizer, Gwendolyn is also a well-recognized thought leader on racial justice and reparations. Gwendolyn currently serves as the vice chair of the town of Great Barrington, W.E.B. -E du Bois Legacy Committee. She is on the advisory board of Greylock Federal Credit Union's Community Development Financial Institution Program and serves as a board member for Women's Fund of Western Massachusetts, UU Mass Action Network, and Shakespeare and Company. A frequent speaker and panelist, Gwendolyn spoke most recently at the 38th annual E.F. Schumacher Lectures celebrating the 150th anniversary of the birth of W.E.B. Du Bois in 2019 Western Mass 
Health Equity Summit and Policy Links Equity Summit in 2018. Gwendolyn holds a BA from Simons Rock with concentrations in languages and literature, art and art history, and women's studies. In 2015, she graduated with a certificate in positive psychology from the Whole Being Institute at Kripalu. She has completed the People's Institute for Survival and Beyond, undoing racism training, and in 2011, the Leadership Institute for Political and Public Impact through the Women's Fund of Western Massachusetts. Gwendolyn Van Zandt, in honor of Bridges' exemplary service to MCLA and to our communities, I am proud to confer upon you the MCLA Presidential Medallion. Thank you. You're very welcome. Well, all right, let's see if I can get this. Yeah, I'll do it without hitting the glasses then. There we go. All right, let's turn that around. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for this honor. I'm Gwendolyn Van Sant, and I'm co-founder and chief executive officer of Berkshire Resources for the Integration of Diverse Groups in Education, also known as BRIDGE, a minority and women-run and led organization serving the Commonwealth and beyond. I am incredibly humbled to be honored at this historic moment for Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts and its 125th anniversary. For me, Authentically being honored by MCLA right now means so many things as a black woman activist. Since 2010, Bridge has partnered with MCLA in a myriad of ways, in training, hosting interns, co-leading race dialogues with Tom Alexander and the students of Campus Conversations on Race, and employing alumni. We have a few on our team right now. Most recently, we partnered, partnered with the 2019 Equity Inclusion Conference and the launch of the Arts and Humanities Institute at MCLA, also in 2019. As you see, MCLA is near and dear to Bridges' story. In collaboration with MCLA faculty, I also personally was able to support the continuation of Greylock Teach Fellows for several years, where we prepared ethnically diverse local high school students to join the Berkshire County Education Teaching Workforce. This work was a collaboration among Bridge, MCLA, and Greylock Federal Credit Union. And I look forward to the integration of those students back into our local school systems as they complete their college degrees. So I want to start with a thank you to you all for being here virtually in this historic moment for MCLA during these tumultuous times in our country. We face the election just a few months away with historic numbers of women and women of color running for office, including our vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris. At the onset of the year, I committed to start 2020 with clear vision and steady focus, and I did not know how important that intention would be. I have been inspired by a Congressional Black Caucus of women and been lifted up by many other Black women leaders in 2020. In our lifetime, I don't think we could ever have imagined a time like this one with the collision of both a pandemic and a resurgence of a social justice movement for the rights, dignity, and safety of Black lives. In my standing here today, I acknowledge MCLA is demonstrating the value of Black women's leadership, grassroots leadership, and the importance of anti-racism work with the gender and poverty analysis in and outside of the college labs and classrooms, because that is the work we have held persistently with unwavering intention for the last 13 years at Bridge. We are pleased that MCLA is committing to renew this focus daily while championing everyone's humanity and holding a vision for a mission that promotes equitable representation and reflection, as well as mutual respect for our Berkshire community, it is so important to me that we recognize the impact an institution like MCLA can have and does have on students. There is opportunity to unpack the institutionalized norms of white middle-class culture rooted in patriarchal structures and to continually cultivate an institution that models access equity and inclusion throughout its programs, staffing, leadership, and the student body. With that, I want to ask that we lift up our communities as much as I feel lifted up by this medallion, acknowledging my vision and Bridges' collective work towards equity, safety, and justice. This award is for all of us and all the hard work and life practice of disrupting historical and cultural norms that leave people just like me behind every day in education. One of the messages that I would most want you all to hear is about accountability. 
We are accountable to each other's humanity, each other's work, each other's trials, and to each other's individual experiences. In working towards justice and equity in our communities, you may even be accountable to people who you have been socialized to not see and to not value their voice or their perspective. I'm asking you to see them and value them. Know you have a lot to learn about them and about yourself. Every human encounter is a valuable one, a learning opportunity and self-discovery. With a growing sense of living accountably, it compels us to act when you see an evidence when you see evidence of systemic or cultural injustice. You have to learn to shout it on the mountaintop because by doing this, you begin to articulate your own intention and your own sense of accountability towards a safer, more just, and more equitable society for Black, Indigenous, Asian, and other people of color and marginalized groups. For people who've been historically underrepresented due to race, religion, and ethnicity. For folks living in poverty and without access to resources. For our elders, for folks who are not neurotypical and might be individuals living with differing abilities or chronic illnesses, and for our newly arrived immigrants, just to name a few. The act of being engaged civically on your campuses and in your communities is how you make the beautiful things happen. Bridge is living evidence. Our pathway has been one where you catalyze change and you inspire courage over fear on behalf of your collective community. You owe it to yourself, your families, and neighbors, as well as to generations you will never meet, to use your voice, your influence, your power for good, and, po and for positive social impact. Dr. Du Bois says, education and work are the levers to uplift a people. As humans, we all have preferences and are all a result of our cultural contexts. We do have to acknowledge and navigate our biases. If you look at the science around bias, one thing you'll learn about is microaffirmations. Microaffirmations can be a tool to create small moments that affirm someone's presence, belonging, and identity. Let's welcome those individuals who, for reasons of class, gender, or race, ordinarily would not feel welcome or comfortable as a new college student, a non-traditional student, or a new faculty or staff member. We need to affirm that everyone is welcome and valued in our school communities and at all times. They need to see themselves in the classrooms and in the books and in the texts in a positive light. In the authentic storytelling of this country, we need institutions like MCLA to keep telling the truth, welcoming in diverse perspectives and responding to diverse needs of students. Our future lies here. We see it time and time again in our history. If we choose to be brave and discerning, miracles and new discoveries can happen. We can only impact change when we are courageous and bold when we take risks. You may be lonely for a period of time, but then miraculously, the people who join you are the right people. I'm happy that mainstream audiences are entering conversations around reparations. For example, colleges are offering free tuition to those adversely impacted by our country's historical actions. Corporations are giving with no strings or hurdles attached to those adversely impacted by social oppressions. Especially during this time of the pandemic, institutions are listening to communities, asking what they need and following their lead in how to create pathways to success. You can play your part in reparations too. You can shift resources or leverage resources differently. You can offer apologies, acknowledgements, and attention where you notice harm. And you can drive forward new emergent work. You can lend your voice to those who have been historically and even in modern day muted. We all can create space for all people of marginalized or historically underrepresented groups to heal, liberate themselves, and restore from the day-to-day -day trauma imposed by structures that harm us or have harmed those generations that came before us. Don't shy away from asking what you can do. And please don't shy away from the truth about our history and our current culture. Lean in so we can affect change together now. The function of the university is not simply to teach breadwinning or to furnish teachers for the public schools or to be a center of polite society. It is, above all, to be the organ of that fine adjustment between real life and the growing knowledge of life, an adjustment which forms the secret of civilization. Again, from Dr. W.B. Du Bois. Mutual respect is about having enough love for oneself to be intentional and deliberate in one's actions, to hold curiosity about another's experience, 
and to exercise the platinum rule of cultural competence, which is to ask questions, listen deeply, and work diligently with and alongside other people. Working alongside another human being requires trust and a true mutual exchange. It also hugely requires courage if we are to face hard things together. I ask that folks around me do these five actions. Ask, amplify, acknowledge, align, and activate. Do something with your voice, your body, your energy, and your influence intentionally each and every day. There is no time to rest. The only urgency is the urgency of care and competence for our most vulnerable students and vulnerable community members. Now is the accepted time, not tomorrow, not some more convenient season. It is today that our best work can be done and not some future day or future year. It is today that we fit ourselves for the greater usefulness of tomorrow. Today is the seed time. Now are the hours of work, and tomorrow comes the harvest and the playtime. Again, Dr. W.B. Du Bois. In thinking about practice and permission to fail, equity work requires making sure that folks around you have what they need in order to thrive, including you. It becomes a practice to truly see and hear another person and to understand an experience that is different than your own. It is also a practice to develop the skill to think critically, know, what you will make, know that you will make mistakes, and commit to the work to repair harm. Maya Angelou, one of my favorites, states, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter these defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from, and how you can still come out of it. Lastly, I wanna talk about taking the long view in activism. For me, this requires cultural humility, vulnerability, and resilience. The message is clear. Do not give up on any student at any age. We can all learn from incredible leaders like Marva Collins, and if you don't know her, look her up. Look up Rita Pearson. These women, along with Dr. Beverly Tatum, Dr. Sonia Nieto, and Dr. Jonathan Kolzel, have taught me so much about affirming identity in education and creating the pathways to equity through activism and teaching. Each educational opportunity in my life provided a pathway to healing and growth all the way into my 40s, and I imagine will continue to do so as I so deeply embrace and cherish my identity as a lifelong learner. For this, I'm filled with gratitude and never-ending optimism in our collective humanity. To all the current, future, and past MCLA students and staff, please take heed to Madam C.J. Walker, who says, I had to make my own living and my own opportunity but I made it. Don't sit down and wait for the opportunities to come. Get up and make them. Help will be there along the way, here at MCLA, with Bridge, and in your Berkshire community. My request to you is to embrace the vision of the world you want and the world we need to leave behind for the next generations. And know you may need to let go of the world as you know, as you know it to make that happen. Thank you, President Burge and all of MCLA for sharing this incredible honor of the President's Medallion with me and with Bridge. I know you will steward this institution well into its next 125 years. We are all on a journey right now, a journey of learning to pause and to celebrate achievements while fighting for justice and equity, to savor these moments of joy and connection during these great times of despair and loss and to ride these waves of knowledge and compassion while confronting ignorance and omission. Thank you in advance for all of the hard work you continue to do alongside us. And once again, thank you for the incredible honor that this medallion holds. It's incredibly affirming and energizing. Our bridge team and I will hold this close into our next dozen years. Thank you. Wait, 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 wait for me. Out of all the colleges and universities around the globe, man, I made the right choice, MCLA. My name's Janine Driver. I'm the body language expert for NBC's Today Show. I don't even care about that stuff, about celebs and politicians and athletes and criminals. You know what I care about? I came to your school with learning differences, a splash of, of, of dyslexia and a whole bunch of ADHD. And when I graduated, years later, I wrote a book. This book became a New York Times bestseller. It's translated in 16 languages around the globe. And guess what? This book 
was edited, every single word by Harris Elder. I, years later, I wrote another book, You Can't Lie to Me. You never heard of it. It didn't make the New York Times bestsellers list. It's translated in a bunch of languages, but no one's ever heard of it. Why? Because I didn't reach out to Harris this time. Shame on me. It's all the Harris Elders out there. The teachers that go above and beyond, not just when we're in the school, but decades later, when you lend a hand, when we call and ask for help. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, MCLA. Cheers to you. And yes, my cup might be empty, but man, my heart is full. I love you. Happy birthday. Cheers, MCLA. Hi. I'm Bob Frazier. I'm the president and CEO of Mount One Bank here in North Adams. And I'm here today uh, to have the pleasure of interviewing and, and speaking with Drew. Um, Mount One has been a long standing supporter of the mission of MCLA. Uh, personally, I have an incredible amount of admiration for the uh, role MCA, MCLA plays in our community, but also. Uh, the students it attracts and provides an education to. And uh, we're very, very happy to be strong supporters of MCLA. Uh, and so um, at this point, uh, let me uh, talk about uh, uh, Drew and allow him to talk about himself. My name's Drew Thomas. I'm a senior studying design. Um, I'm currently working as the graphic designer for MCLA IAH, um, MCLA Institute of Arts and Humanities. I'm really passionate about all kinds of digital art. If you could, tell me a little bit about uh, why you decided to attend MCLA and just uh, in general your experience at MCLA. I definitely um, was interested in going to a smaller school and I really like the, the environment, like the mountain area. That really drew me in. Um, I think it's affected me uh, very positively, just being able to like really connect with my professors and like students, being able to like recognize people wherever I go, is really and, and like developing those good relationships. Tell me about you a little bit about what your internship has been like, uh, what you've enjoyed the most, and, and maybe what uh, what have you learned out of it? Well, I've learned a lot. It's been a really good experience. Everything the, the Institute stands for is like something that means a lot to me, like uh, diversity, inclusion, equity, access. I, I'm on the team as the graphic designer, but within that, there's so much wiggle room for me to um, do to like accomplish what I want on my portfolio and even like some leadership opportunities. And I, I'm just getting a lot out of it, like getting a lot of portfolio pieces out of it and in all kinds of skills. It uh, really sounds like it's been an interesting internship for you. It sounds that you, you know, acquired a lot of different skills. After having this internship, have you, uh, you know, kind of developed uh, what you think is going to be your dream job? Oh, yeah. This, this is what I wanted to do for, like, um, at least since high school. I've always wanted to do something related to art. So, absolutely. Great. Well, you know, it sounds incredibly impressive what you've done. I'm glad you've enjoyed uh, the internship and that you found it worthwhile for your your professional as well as your personal growth. So, and I also have appreciated the opportunity to spend a few moments with you, get to know you, and, and I want to congratulate you for uh, a very successful internship. Good luck in the future. That means a lot to me. It was nice to meet you as well. Thank you. Joining me for our final award is Jane Allen. For some, life is all about learning. For others, teaching is their calling. Service to neighbor and community is the work that inspires other individuals. Jane Allen has crafted a life encompassing all of these purposes. Throughout her life, Jane has been a student, a classroom teacher, an elementary school principal, and an elected town official. She's a wife, she's a mother, she's a grandmother. Jane is a North Adams native, the daughter of Lyndon and Mary Brooks. She grew up on State Street, or Straight State Road across the street from Fort Massachusetts and attended Brayton School. She graduated from Drury High School where she was a cheerleader, 
a member of the Honor Society, student government president, and recipient of the Daughters of the American Revolution Good Citizenship Award and the Elks Leadership Award. While in high school, Jane met her future husband, John Allen. After graduating from college, John and Jane were married in St. Anthony's Church here in North Adams. They have three daughters, Tracy, Terry, and Mimi, and four grandchildren, Brooke, Alex, Simon, and Case. Knowing that she wanted to be a teacher, Jane graduated from North Adams State College in 1961 with a BS degree in elementary education and received the North Adams State Promising Teacher Award. When her children were young, Jane worked as both teacher and director at the Williamstown Cooperative Nursing School and as a volunteer served on the original committee that established the first daycare center in Northern Berkshire County. When her children became school age, Jane was hired to teach first grade in Williamstown, where she also was president of the Williamstown Teachers Association. In 1986, Jane earned her MS in Educational Administration at the State University of New York at Albany. As a principal, Jane worked for eight years in the Central Berkshire Regional School District and for seven years at the Clarksburg Elementary School. During her tenure as principal, Jane had the honor of serving as president of Massachusetts Elementary School Principals Association. After her retirement, Jane worked as a long-term substitute in the guidance department at McCann Vocational School, and on two different occasions, served as acting director of BART, the Berkshire Arts and Technology Public School. Jane began her working career waiting on customers at J.J. Newberry Company on Main Street in North Adams. In retirement, Jane returned to her retail roots, serving coffee and customers at Tunnel City Coffee on Spring Street in Williamstown. Leadership and service have always played an important role in Jane's life. She has served on the boards of ABC A Better Chance, the Williamstown League of Women Voters, Williamstown Boys Club, Williamstown Cable Advisory Committee, Images Cinema, the MCLA Board of Trustees, and the North Adams Regional Hospital Board of Trustees. She is a founding member of the Williamstown Cool CO2 Lowering Committee and the Fund for Williamstown. In 2002, she was elected to the Williamstown Board of Selectmen, where she served for 12 years. In recognition of Jane's commitment to her profession, her alma mater, and her community, she has been honored with numerous awards. At the time of the restoration of Murdoch Hall here on campus, the Jane Allen Fund was established and a classroom was named in her honor. In 2002, Jane received an honorary doctorate in pedagogy from MCLA. She is also the recipient of the MCLA Service to the College Award. In 2005, she was honored with the Northern Berkshire Business and Professional Women of Achievement Award, and at the 2006 Williamstown Town Meeting, received the Faith R. Scarborough Community Service Award. Further honors include inv invitations to be commencement speaker at Clarksburg Elementary School and Miss Hall's School in Pittsfield. Jane has great passion for the organizations she serves. Giving back to her profession and her community in these ways has been her life's work. Jane Allen, in honor of your exemplary service to MCLA and the community, I am proud to confer upon you the MCLA Presidential Medallion. Thank you, President Burge, for the privilege of participating in this celebration and for honoring me with this award. It is extremely meaningful and incredibly humbling. In preparing my remarks for this occasion, I came to two startling re realizations. The first realization was that I am almost as old as the college. In fact, when I researched the past presidents of the college, I realized I knew or knew of all of them, with the exception of President Aldridge, or Eldridge, who was president from 1932 to 1936, and the two principals of the normal school, Leon Smith and Frank Murdoch. And even they were familiar to me because of Murdoch Hall, Smith House, and Eldridge Hall. 
The second realization was that this institution has been educating me in one way or another my whole life. Growing up in North Adams, I attended Brayton School, one of seven neighborhood K through eight grammar schools and graduated from Dury High School, where many of the teachers who shaped my early learning were graduates of this college. Ever since my first grade teacher, Miss Erickson, let me sit in her big chair and direct my reading group, I wanted to be a teacher. The teacher's college in North Adams was a perfect match for me. While teaching in Williamstown, both my students and I benefited from having student teachers in the classroom. Recently, I was so proud when one of them, Dr. Joanne White, was invited back to campus to give a lecture. Later, when I became a principal, I hired and learned from talented teachers prepared by this institution. Serving on the MCLA Board of Trustees, I benefited from the knowledge and example of others. I watched in awe as President Mary Grant made the case for a new science center and then miraculously made it happen in record-setting time. Later, as a Williamstown selectman, we borrowed a page from Mary's book and built housing for displaced residents of the Spruces in record-setting time. In retirement, my MCLA education continues as I attend Hardman, Vadney, and public policy lectures, celebrate commencement as a golden grad, and attend emeritus faculty luncheons organized by Steve Green. To all of you who've been on this amazing educational journey with my family, my teachers, my classmates, my colleagues, my friends, thank you. You have taught me so much, and I'm so grateful. And I'm standing here today because of you. Just a few years ago, the U.S. Department of Education recognized MCLA for providing a low-cost education and whose graduates went on to high-wage earning jobs. Add to that recognition the fact that 20% of our students come from families earning less than $20,000 a year, and you realize we are indeed providing an education that allows students to have a life that they had never had, and an education that is breaking the cycle of poverty for hundreds of students a year. If there is a more noble purpose to, for a college, I don't know it. I'd like to thank each of you for joining us tonight from your homes. I hope you've learned more about MCLA and how important a role it is that we play in securing a better future for our students and for our communities. I also hope you will help MCLA continue this noble purpose that I mentioned just a moment ago by making a contribution to supporting our students. The proceeds from this event will be directed to our 125th Elevating Lives Fund, which will be used to help students from families who struggle to find the resources to pay for their students' education. I hope you will join us in this most purposeful, noble, and important venture. You can make a contribution to this purpose by clicking the donate button below or by using the text to give link on your screen. Thank you for committing to our students. Thank you again for your support and for joining us in this virtual celebration. Stay well, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Good night.